Hey, welcome back to another live episode of the Relevant Recruiter Show. Today we're going to be doing a live training and we're going to be talking about how staying top of mind is going to create more consistent job orders for your recruiting agency. So if you're just joining with me live right now, uh, go ahead and give me a like and a comment. Let me know that you're here. Um, and uh, if you're enjoying anything that I drop throughout this, I would appreciate a little bit of love. The more likes and comments, the more spread that this video gets. So I'm realizing I forgot my light today, so I'm going to be halfway dark for you folks. So anyways, let's stop with the fluff. Let's dive into today's training. So again, we're talking about staying top of mind. And you know, a lot of recruiters and recruiting agencies that I work with, um, they do a really good job of that initial outreach. They're either doing that kind of traditional outbound calling, uh, hammering people, um, kind of taking the low hanging fruit, same thing with uh, if they're if, if we're doing you know initial email outreaches again i think we're all really good at mining and taking that low-hanging fruit when people we just happen where the stars align where we send a message or we make a phone call and they happen to have a need and they answer that message or pick up that phone call and that's how a lot of business has been built but there's a lot of fruit out there with a solid follow-up strategy and the follow-up strategy should ultimately drive top of mind brand awareness. Okay. And so what I want to show with you today is how that's ultimately going to lead to better clients, better engagements and relationships with clients, and ultimately drive more placements for you. So first, let's just kind of get into the basic. And what is top of mind brand awareness? Well, if I were to ask you, um, you know, uh, if I were to tell you right now to think of a video game character, um, and you grew up in my era, uh, <laughs> you know, chances are, you know, you might think of, uh, the Mario brothers, uh, the, the, the Italian plumbers there, or you might think of Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Those might be famous video game characters. If you were to look at if I were to say, Hey, what is your favorite car? The first car that pops into your head? Well, they have top of mind awareness for you. So on the very basics, that's all it is, is, is just being top of mind when somebody thinks about that. So the question that I want you to answer and go in the comments and drop this right now is, is your brand the first one that people think of in your niche? And if you're being honest, you know, some of you might be able to say that yes, very confidently. Some of you might be able to realize that, hey, there's a lot of opportunity um, for you to do this more powerfully. Okay. And so, that's that's the first thing with brand awareness is just understanding that I want to be the very first choice. Now, why is is brand awareness and staying top of mind important, especially in the recruiting industry? Again, um, you know, with the initial outreach and, and taking the low hanging fruit, obviously we're going to get plenty of opportunity, but there's a lot more and again better opportunity. So, why? Well, the first thing is, is because you want to be that first choice, especially in this space, right? doesn't matter if you are trying to get retainers or if you are doing contingent, but you like some sort of exclusivity. If I'm the first thought, then I, that's what gives me that chance, right? Is I'm going to get more retainers. I'm going to get more exclusive opportunities because I'm the first thing that they think of. If I'm not the first thing that they think of, guess what? By the time they get to you and you're doing contingent recruiting, there might've be four or five other recruiters that have already picked over the market, making your responses from candidates even that much harder. So that's why it's critically important to not just be a thought, but be the first thought and the only thought and that comes from having a great top of mind awareness strategy, which we'll unlock for you today. Okay. The next thing is you're going to establish way more trust and credibility. Why? Because you're showing up more to the marketplace and the more that they see you, the more that they're going to perceive the value in, in, in trust in what you bring to the table. OK, so that is that's the next thing is that you're going to have way more trust. And ultimately, one of the things that a lot of folks, I think, um, miss out on is, is you're going to get more repeat customers from your existing clients. OK, or more, more repeat business, excuse me, from your existing clients. And this actually came up on our coaching call the other day. Um, and they said, hey, I got a great reputation you know, why aren't these people calling me back? Well, just because you didn't, you did a great job doesn't mean that they're naturally going to think of you first. So the easiest place to start this most low hanging fruit that you can tap into is just to start getting top of mind to your existing customer base and stop assuming that just because you did a great job for them the first time, they're naturally going to come back to you the next time, right? How many times in your life have you had a quality experience and yet you went and, you know, went to, you know, for example, um, you know, you have a, you have a really quality experience, uh, you know, maybe shopping for a pair of skis 
But the next time, you know, it comes around for you to shop for a pair of skis, you just go to the place that's most convenient, even though, yeah, you, you know about that, but they didn't do a good job nurturing. Well, you know, we're leaving those things on the table oftentimes. So that's really why we want to do this. We want to be the first choice. We would be the most trusted. We want to drive more repeat business from our, cl our existing clients and, you know, not assume that, that we're going to be their, their first and obvious choice, even though we did a killer job for them. Okay. So here's what we want to do to really, you know, drive more consistent job orders from our, from our, our top of mind strategy here. So the first thing is actually having a plan. Um, what I see from a lot of, of, of companies out there, um, and it's not their fault, it's just they react. So it's like, oh, well, business is good. I'm going to stay doing what I'm doing. Business is good. I'm going to stay doing what I'm doing. Business is good. And then all of a sudden, oh, the pipeline starts to dry out. Oh, shoot, I need to react. And now I just start reacting and following up and nothing's in, in congruence with the rest of my strategies. Um, a, a lot of people have forgotten about me because I haven't done a good job of staying top of mind. I have, you know, so I really lose a lot as soon as I get out of not having a plan. So that plan, you know, you want to get clarity on, well, what is our messaging going to be for our follow up strategy? What are the channels that we're going to use to follow up? Um, what are the tools that we're going to use? You know, what lists do I have? That's the basic foundation of anything is, is making sure the last thing you want to do is be trying to build this plan when you're trying to play, right? The last time to try to build messaging, create messaging scripts, create content is, is when you're in that moment of having to actually do your follow-up. You want all this stuff done and complete and, and ready to rock and roll. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have an actual follow-up strategy and plan that's clear clear for you, okay? And so what that would look like is, is having a plan that's really focused on each individual prospect's level of awareness, okay? And um, with all the automation in the world, and a lot of you guys know that I'm a big believer in automation, but if we're being honest, it's just getting sloppy now. And everybody's looking to utilize automation to, you know, um, basically not have to do the work. <laughs> And, you know, I think if you can really open up your mind to having a hybrid approach where, yeah, you want to leverage the heck out of automation, don't get me wrong, like automation is a big part, but you want to use the automation to really drive awareness, okay? That's where I think that automation is most powerful for recruiting companies, when I'm just simply to try to make people aware and know that I exist, because that's one of the biggest challenges that we face in general as recruiters is just straight up obscurity, our market knowing that we exist and we exist for them. So in order to make myself more aware and to cast a wider net, that's where automation becomes really effective. But the mistake in automation is where people try to use automation in all stages of awareness um, and, you know, almost all the way to the close to try to get somebody on the phone. In my opinion, you want to use, again, automation to start that awareness. And then, you know, you want your follow up strategy and your top of mind strategy. You want to have a, a part of that plan. Uh, allow for each individual prospect to kind of go to on a manual journey with you, which means that you have to do a little bit more work. Okay. But there's tools out there, <laughs> cough, cough, the uh, relevant recruiter app that can help you um, do this very, very efficiently. Um, but more importantly, it's understanding this, the, the buyer, you know, or the hiring managers stages of awareness. So the first stage of awareness is just simply being aware that you exist. Once they're aware you, that you exist, then you kind of get into the category where you're going to try to enrich that relationship. You might drop a compliment. Um, you might start, you know, uh, dialoguing and find common, you know, uh, commonalities between you and your prospect so that you can just, you know, build yourself that much closer. And then your next stage would might be to establish your credibility and your authority through some social proof or through some relevant content. And then getting to the point where you get them into, you know, motivating them to a point where they're ready to take action, right? And you can call to action stage. So if you can start to think about four different buckets of where prospects are going to land, hey, not everybody's hiring, <laughs> especially right now, right? Things have changed. So if I keep, you know, uh, if I keep approaching every single prospect, like they're in the same level of awareness, then chances are I'm not getting near as much response as I possibly can if I approach each individual prospect. Okay. So um, that's the next thing. The first thing is, is again, having that plan. The next thing is making sure that a part of that plan is going to have uh, a manual touch point for different stages of awareness. Okay. So the next thing that comes into play is having a great CRM um, that allows you to, um, you know, move people through these stages uh, efficiently. Okay. And again, this is where, in my opinion, you want to have, and this is kind of more sales, not, not as much marketing, 
um, I, I want to have a manual follow up and, and I want to find each prospect and where they're at in these different stages of, of awareness. OK, but follow up now, um, you know, if all I'm doing is is cold calling, I'm leaving a lot on the table. If all I'm doing is emailing, I'm leaving a lot on the table. If all I'm doing is LinkedIn messaging. I'm leaving a lot on the table. Really what's most powerful and most effective to stay top of mind is to have a multi-channel approach, okay? I would even say an omni-channel approach where your market starts to see you everywhere. But from a direct outreach standpoint, you've got calls, you've got text messages, you've got emails, you've got social media touch points. There's a lot of ways that you can stay top of mind and I would encourage you to have a top of mind approach. So for example, if you called somebody today, then you might have a note in your CRM then to send them a text message tomorrow. And by doing that, um, I'm going to drive awareness for this prospect. I'm going to hit them on a channel that maybe they're more receptive to. Uh, for example, we might be in LinkedIn every single day and our prospects might link, log into LinkedIn once a week. Okay. So I might start that conversation on LinkedIn. I might not hear any response. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to go, all right, well, everybody answers their email. Let me go try them on email. And the whole goal here is to, in your head, realize that like, you don't, there's not necessarily a perfect set of sequences out there. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, it, but it's, it's always for yourself, you know, eliminating all those barriers and boundaries that you put in your head or limiting beliefs where it's like, Oh, well, I don't have their phone number, so I can't do this. Um, well, let's just take what we can get. If I have their email address and their social media, then boom, let me just follow up on there. And then I can follow up and do it in a way that's frictionless. Hey, John, I just left you a voicemail. Um, I'm sending you this text message just to make you aware of that. No need to respond here. Just go ahead and, you know, check out that voicemail that I sent over to you. Right. Um, and having that multi-channel, you know, follow-up allows us to kind of just point people back into our original message and, and peak and poke that interest. Okay. Um, and so if I, if I do my first touch point on phone and then I do my next point at touch point a couple of days later on text and they don't respond, well now may I, Hey, maybe I'll go ahead and drop in and send them a LinkedIn message. Okay. Um, now, I'd encourage you to just be playful with this and develop your own, you know, um, system if you can, right. And, and test certain things. Now, I, if to pause a little bit, I'm talking a lot of this about more on the client development side, but obviously a lot of these approaches are going to support, um, anything you're doing from candidate development, right? I'm going to call you, I'm going to text you, I'm going to email you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to social media <laughs> you. Um, so that's the next tip is having a CRM that allows for manual touch points across multiple channels. And then the other thing is making sure that you have something that's notifying you every single day on those actions that you want to be able to take um, so that you have a clear plan of action. Because let's be let's be honest about like prospecting and doing, you know, follow up with prospecting is it's not hard as much as it is boring. So, you know, having that plan in place of knowing exactly what I need to do um, is going to be critically, critically important for you. OK, so we have, you know, having a plan overall you know, making sure that that plan is going to support different stages of awareness, having a CRM that can, you know, uh, allow you to touch your clients and candidates across multiple channels. So the next thing is, you know, really creating value-based content. Okay. Um, creating value-based content is really going to skyrocket, skyrocket your awareness, excuse me, um, uh, for your market. So this is really what's going to establish a lot of that credibility, um, have your market view you as a valuable resource, ultimately how you, your market view you as an authority. Um, and, and that's going to be a big part of positioning you as the, the, as the only choice. So a lot of people ask me like, hey, is, do I need to create content for my recruiting business? And my answer is 100% yes. If you're not, you know, you're still going to be able to get business, but you're not taking full advantage of what's out there for you um, uh, to be able to kind of take the, and capture the other low hanging fruit. But more importantly, is to be able to establish yourself as you know, a resource to be able to establish yourself as an authority to be able to establish yourself and make yourself go like, yeah, that is the number one person in the market. That is the person that I want to talk to. And so that is the power of, of content. But this is, again, if you watch some of my other trainings, this is where content really kind of, I think, confuses a lot of people. A lot of people start to think when they have to go market, they need to go sell their business. They need to go promote their business. When in reality, you know, good content is actually going to solve problems for your market. It's going to actually, you know, marketing um, in content so really 90% of that should be about your market, about their pains, about their problems, about the hell that they're living in, about showing them what, what heaven looks like. Right. And, and, you know, creating stories and analogies that they can attach to and talk to talk about and, and really remember you by that's the whole power of, of creating content. The other thing comes into, you know, when you look at, sorry, dogs going ape out there. Um, when you start to look at, uh, um, 
the different types of content, you know, when you start promoting your business, what happens is when I have these promotional, you know, things of like, hey, three things why you need or three reasons why you want to, you know, uh, work with XYZ company. I'm not telling you not to have that. Okay. That's a sales part. You should have all of those things as a part of that. But that's where a lot of uh, companies, I, that's all that they do is the, all they're doing is they're creating and posting stuff that's about them. We're in a world now that everyone wants to know what's in it for me. So if you're creating a bunch of stuff, promoting your, your, your business, your prospects really don't care <laughs> what they want to care. What they care about is how your business impacts them. And that's where the value part comes into play. The other thing is just about capturing eyeballs and attention because right now we're in, you know, the greatest currency that's really out there is the, is the ability to, to capture people's attention. You're not just competing against other recruiting agencies. I'm not just competing, competing with other coaches and marketers. We are competing for people's mind space right now. We're competing for attention. So, you know, if I were to say, you know, ask people, and this is actually, if you've never read The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes, it's a great book. Um, it's kind of a classic. It's been out there for years. But one of the things he he goes through in this book is, is that there's only a certain amount of people that are in the in buying mode. In our case, that's hiring, right? But he uses the analogy um, where, hey, if I were to ask, hey, who here is buying a car right now? You know, well, typically what you find is that there's like 3% of the market that would be actively buying almost anything, okay? I don't know what that number actually is for hiring, but just follow along with me here. So if all I was doing, if you were, if we, if, you know, if we we're using the analogy of a car, if all I was doing is constantly promoting ads about special financing and all these features in this car. And, you know, you probably hear the Toyota thon at this point of the year, especially if you're watching sports, they're hammering you with the Toyota thon. Well, if you're not in the market for a car, your, your awareness around that, that message, you're not even really receiving that message, right? It's just, it's just going on. But if you are in the market for a car, you're very in tune with that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, if all I'm doing is promoting all the time, then I'm only capturing that 3% of people that might be actually have attention uh, and have that need right now. But if I'm adding value, and so if I were going back to that car analogy, rather than putting a promotional ad about, you know, you know, a great offer I have going out, what if I gave you three tips on how you can save gas? Well, shit, almost everybody in the world right now would be interested in that, <laughs> right? People would be interested, They're like, okay, yeah, share, share that with me. Well, that's how the value system works. So, you know, not everybody's hiring right now, but what can, what kind of value can you share with them about, you know, how they can bolster and how, what are the tweaks they can make to their current hiring process that can help them the next time, you know, the market shifts and they start to hire, right? Um, or looking at the opportunities, maybe somebody's not jumping a career right now, but what are the things they can be doing? You know, um, maybe they're passively starting to think about that. What should they be doing with their resume, their profile, their LinkedIn? Be the one that leads them with that type of value okay if it's not coming from you it's coming from somebody so you might as well be the one and start jumping in on this race and adding value with your content but hopefully that analogy shares that when i when i when i create more value then i can capture more audience i can capture that 90 percent of the seven percent of the people that aren't buying right now but i know i'm starting to build these things that help me stay top of mind so when they do you know buy in our case higher or ready to change jobs or switch careers we become that obvious choice as their partner to do that with them. So the last part of this, excuse me, I'm gonna grab my phone here. I don't know if I don't have any details here um, in terms of this live, but the last part of this whole thing is um, when do you automate again? Okay, um, because we wanna be able to leverage some automation. So again, if you've been with me the whole time, a lot of this automation comes from um, you know, starting the awareness part. But as you start to find more information about, you know, your prospects, um, you know, you might reach out and, you know, you know, James responds back to you and he says, Hey, you know, we don't have anything right now. We're probably going to be on a hiring freeze until at least middle of next year. Awesome. So I'm not going to take my time, uh, to manually continue to reach out to James every couple of weeks over the next, you know, couple months to stay top of mind when, you know, uh, chances are he's not hiring over the next six months, right? So that's when I would go ahead and drop drink James into a drip email campaign that's all value based and just drip out something to him, you know, every couple of weeks, once a month. And now those prospects that aren't hot right now, I have the opportunity through automation just to carry on that conversation. Okay. But my hottest prospects, again, I want to be doing that manually. Uh, another thing, and this isn't true automation, but um, if we're looking at technology, this is kind of your bonus tip for the day is look at retargeting. Okay. So what is retargeting? Retargeting is that fancy 
little uh, pixel thing that you put on your website. And then as people visit your website, you start to see um, that company everywhere. For those of you that have been to my website, you might see that a little bit. But to give you an analogy, again, you know, you've probably seen you went and shopped for a pair of shoes. And next thing you know, everywhere you go, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, you know, anywhere on, on the web, you start to see that sh pair of shoes follow you around. So you can create that kind of awareness around your brand where, hey, everybody that goes to your website where you have targeted traffic, you just slap that pixel on and then you just start carrying your brand message around and follows them everywhere. And that helps you with top of mind brand awareness. So now that i explained all of that let me go back and ask you is your brand the very first one that people think of when they think about you when they think about hiring in your niche is your brand number one are you the top brand and go in the comments let me know if you have any questions now i just kind of pulled up my thing here so i can uh be able to answer anything because my comments aren't connected to the streaming app I'm using right now. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in there right now. But that question that I'm asking you right now is, is your brand the first one um, people think of in your niche? And if the answer is, I don't know or no, then we should talk because I've got a great program called the Relevant Recruiter Program, if you've been following me for a while, where we help you build out a complete inbound marketing system that helps recruiting companies drive more consistent revenue by using the power of inbound lead generation and automation and ultimately building out marketing system that drives top brand awareness in the marketplace. And we in this program are helping people with traditional prospecting strategies and intertwining that with traditional marketing strategies and doing it in a congruent way that it actually is a system for your business. Now, I told you in the beginning, well, why does this get better quality leads? But let me ask you this, if we're just using some logical, you know, uh, stuff right now is, you know, if, if somebody, if you were just cold calling, for example, and you got that order, that's awesome. Obviously a lot of that, that happens, you know, every single day, right? So again, it's not an, it's not an argument or conversation around what works, what doesn't. I think everything can really work with the right strategy and right approach. I think messaging and approach is a lot more important than, than anything else out there. But with one transaction, they never heard of me. I picked up the phone. They called me. Yeah, I can get that job order. But how many other people in town have gotten that job order? Okay. Versus, okay, so I take more of a long-term approach. I take more of this inbound approach where I'm going to target my prospect. I'm going to make them aware of me. I'm going to you know, compliment them. I'm going to share a bunch of value with them. So when their hiring need does around, not only my top of mind, but they have this belief in my authority. So... What does this change for you? Well, it, it changes from you just being a traditional recruiter, which whether you want to hear this or not, you're a commodity into the recruiter. We call you the relevant recruiter because they're, you're the only choice in that marketplace. Go ahead and ask Tom Caravello what's that like, because he knows what it's like to be the top of mind choice in his marketplace. You can ask Matt, Matt, ask Matt Barkas. You can ask Alex Biondo. You can ask Katie Kelly, Ben Bonnell. These are people that have implemented this type of system that are seeing the impacts of being able to, you know, have a system where you can stay top of mind and do this consistently where it's not all built off of manual effort, but you need to be able to do that manual effort because that's just a part of this. Again, with automation, it's all about using the automation to start your conversations and create awareness and allowing your magic, your human touch, being able to drive the revenue and drive the sales and drive the placements of your organization. So if you're interested in just exploring this, if you're ready to take 2023 and build it to the next level, then let's start now. Let's start building that plan right now. And then by Q1, we're already executing and putting you ahead of the curve. So it doesn't matter if you know your business has had an explosive year this year and you've slowed down a little bit because you haven't stayed on top of your business development and your marketing efforts because you've been too busy focusing on filling placements. Or maybe you're fully dialed in, but you're just looking for that next bullet to take your business to the next level. Let's talk. Go ahead, drop a comment there. Send me a direct message here on LinkedIn. We'll do a free call. I'll walk you through. Uh, first, my, my first goal is to get clarity on, on you and your business and if this strategy can help you out. And then we walk you through exactly how the strategy would apply to your business specifically. Now, keep in mind, what we just walked, walked through today is more about the follow-up. And there's a lot of other components 
that we teach from how to build a brand, how to build the brand image, how to automate, how to dominate your LinkedIn, how to create content and how to show up on multiple channels with that content, with a great follow-up marketing and prospecting system. So this is Donnie Gupton. Hope you found some value in this video. If you did, go ahead and tap those likes, give me some comments. I appreciate you guys uh, being here today. Again, send me a direct message if you're ready to take action. If you're ready to dominate and win big, give me a call. It's what we do. Talk to you soon.